Welcome back, everybody, to the Jacksonville Jaguars franchise here on Madden 21 for the PS5. Today's episode is a very exciting one. The 2024 NFL Draft is here. Last episode was free agency. We made a lot of big moves, including giving Josh Allen a big contract extension. We franchise tagged Miles Jack, and we let a lot of starters go, including Brandon Linder, J.K. Dobbins, Brian Burns, and David Njoku. Of those guys, Njoku is the only one we brought back in the open market. Our other big free agent signings included Tristan Wirfs, Akeem Davis Gaither, Noah Igbenogany, and other depth players. However, the main story of last episode were the trades we made. We sent linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch to the Denver Broncos for two fourth-round picks, one this year, which is pick 97, and a fourth next year. The big deal, however, was C.J. Henderson being traded to the Chargers, and the reason why I traded C.J. Henderson is that he's on the last year of his contract, and with already having Zaire Wiggins needing a new deal soon, I didn't want to pay both of them. Henderson was traded along with Tyler Matthews in exchange for cornerback Isaiah Clemmings, defensive tackle Octavius October, and the Chargers third round pick number 69, nice, overall. The free agency class was very talented. There are a lot of new faces in new homes, most notably running back Derrick Henry, no longer in our division. He signed a three-year deal with the New York Jets. So we're not going to have to worry about Derrick Henry twice a year, which is quite refreshing. So let's get this NFL draft underway. We have a nice haul of picks, including three third-rounders. Obviously, we own pick 32, considering we won the Super Bowl. We also own two fourth-rounders. We do not own anything in the fifth or sixth rounds, however. So we will go pretty much 100 picks in between our fourth and seventh round selection, unless we make some moves, which knowing us, we certainly will. So the draft is now underway. If you would like to download the draft class, it is available for both PS4 and PS5. It is called Jags Class 4. So that's what you can type in to the thing. You can also type in my online ID as well. Download it, and then you can use all of these rookies in your Madden franchises as well. The other three draft classes should be up on the draft class vault as well. So, without further ado, let's get this show underway. The 2024 NFL Draft is now officially open, and the Denver Broncos are on the clock with the top pick. With the first pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Richard Rivers Jr., defensive tackle, Westlake. This was the only pick the Broncos could make. Richard Rivers Jr. is one of the greatest talents to enter the NFL Draft pretty much ever. 6'11", 380 pounds, he benched 45 reps on the bench, ran a 4'5'40", and has a 40-inch vertical. I promise if you don't know this draft class very well, I'll tell you that most of these people are built like actual humans, but Big Tuna here is not. A-plus pick by the Broncos. With the second pick, the Houston Texans select Trendon Bailey Reigns cornerback LSU. This pick sort of caught me off guard a little bit, and it's not that Trenton Bailey Reigns is a bad player, because I think he's pretty good, but I was not expecting him to go this early. I think there's a better corner on the board who probably will not have to wait too much longer to hear his name called. With the third pick, the Carolina Panthers select Joe Lilly, cornerback Westlake. It's the Carolina Panthers who will capitalize on Houston's mistake, and they will land Joe Lilly. Lilly reminds me so much of Zaire Wiggins, but he arguably has better ball skills coming out of college than Wiggins did. Joe Lilly is going to be an absolute monster at the NFL level. A-plus pick for Carolina. With the fourth pick, the Washington football team selects Ray Darius St. Montclair, edge rusher, Oregon. The football team was not a good football team last year, pun intended, so they shouldn't really be going for positions that they don't need at all, such as defensive line, but St. Montclair is the best player on the board. I don't blame them at all. With the fifth pick, the Los Angeles Chargers select Theodoros Constantidis, offensive tackle, West Virginia. The first offensive player finally goes off the board, as the Chargers are going to give Justin Herbert some protection with the addition of Constantidis. With the sixth pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Kayvon McDaniels, wide receiver Clemson. Kayvon McDaniels is a really good player, don't get me wrong, 
but I don't get this pick by the Steelers. They have Michael Gallup, Juju Smith-Schuster, and they drafted Carter Westwood, number two overall last year. So I don't know how McDaniels is going to see the field at all, considering their receiving core is already loaded. With the seventh pick, the Los Angeles Rams select Siante Cunningham, tight end, Cincinnati. Think Kyle Pitts when you see Siante Cunningham. This is a wide receiver in a tight end's body. The Rams are clearly still committed to building around Jared Goff, and they gave him maybe the best offensive playmaker in the draft. With the eighth pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Cassius Troy, wide receiver Westlake. This is the exact same scenario as the Steelers pick. Cassius Troy is really good, but the Bucks receiving core is already loaded. They have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Marquise Parks. So I really don't see how Cassius Troy can get on the field unless they trade one of those veterans away. With the ninth pick, the New York Jets select Nikki Hagabawa, linebacker, UCLA. Hagabawa is a little bit raw, only as a 72 overall, but his athleticism is off the charts. Very good cover linebacker. This is a guy who definitely could have been a trade-up candidate for the Jaguars, but they just don't have the ammo to move into the top 10. With the 10th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Brandon Henley, offensive tackle, LSU. Value-wise, Brandon Henley at 10 is not outstanding, but the Eagles know they have to build around the offensive line. When they won the Super Bowl a few years back, their offensive line was one of the best in the NFL, and they're trying to get younger and even better. With the 11th pick, the Arizona Cardinals select Kai Arsenio, cornerback, Georgia State. Kai Arsenio is a very versatile defensive back who I think will flourish with the Arizona Cardinals. After the top two corners, there is a little bit of a drop, but I do think Kai Arsenio is really good, and he's definitely worth this selection here at 11. With the 12th pick, the San Francisco 49ers select Leo Uwangale, quarterback, Boise State. The first QB is finally off the board as Leo Uwangale will replace Jimmy Garoppolo in San Francisco. This pick surprises me a little bit because I would have thought that Kyle Shanahan would have wanted to work with like some freak athlete quarterback who has ridiculous tools. That's not the case with Uwangale. Uwangale does not have the strongest arm. His game is accuracy and efficiency. I don't think he has a super high ceiling, but I do like his floor. With the 13th pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Shaq Van Buren, defensive tackle, Washington. Minnesota is trying to get some beef inside with Shaq Van Buren, who doesn't do any one thing particularly well, but he is a pretty high floor player who doesn't have any major weaknesses in his game. With a 14th pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Musa Ndumbe, cornerback, Cincinnati. Ndumbe was projected to go in the top 10, and I'm a little bit surprised to see him fall this far. He's only a 73 overall, so I guess NFL teams realize he's not all that special. But Atlanta needs some help in the secondary, and I think he could be a starting caliber player pretty early in his career. With the 15th pick, the New England Patriots select Sigunds Romanovskis, quarterback, Eastern Washington University. The Latvian Laser is headed to the Evil Empire. Despite re-signing Cam Newton earlier in the offseason, the New England Patriots have drafted the strong-arm quarterback Sigunds Romanovskis, who is 99 throw power. I think this is the best QB in this class, not only day one, but I think his upside is better than Leo Uwangale's. Even though he only has normal development, I think his potential is sky high, and I think he could be really good at the next level. With the 16th pick, the Cleveland Browns select Lucky Get It, wide receiver, Eastern Washington University. Seaguns Romanovskis' favorite target in college will not have to wait too much longer to hear his name called as Lucky Get It is going to the Cleveland Browns, going to try to add to an already talented but aging receiving core. With the 17th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Mohamed Iluko, cornerback, TCU. I like the player the Dolphins are getting here in Mohamed Iluko, but the fit does not really make a lot of sense. To me, he's a poor man's Amir Olujiri, 
who is the ultra talented corner who the Dolphins picked in the first round last year not to mention they have Byron Jones and Xavier and Howard as well along with Tristan Moon so I really don't see how Luko fits on this team but I guess he is a good player and good players make it work with the 18th pick the Baltimore Ravens select Shabazz Trenton the second edge rusher Auburn the rich proceed to get richer. The Ravens always seem to have ultra-talented players on their defense, and Shabazz Trenton II out of Auburn is pretty much the next player in line. Awesome pick for Baltimore. With the 19th pick, the Las Vegas Raiders select Stephon Hampton, linebacker, Illinois. Stephon Hampton is headed to the Raiders. This is a tough football player who I think Raiders fans are really going to love because of his blue-collar, gritty mentality. And I think this is a solid pick here in the middle of the first round for the Raiders. With the 20th pick, the New Orleans Saints select Ayoka Odogwu, edge rusher, Iowa State. Sort of how the Dolphins have an obsession to drafting corners, the Saints had that same obsession with drafting pass rushers. Odogu here is pretty good, but I don't really know how he's going to see the field a ton early, but again, I guess good players do make it work. With the 21st pick, the Tennessee Titans select Gilly Booklink, running back, Florida State. I absolutely love this pick for the Titans. Gilly Booklink is an absolute stud, and I think him and Jonathan Taylor are going to be a great pair in the Tennessee Titans backfield. Although Derrick Henry is gone, I think Gilly Booklink has the chance to be one of the best running backs in the NFL in a very short time from now. Phenomenal pick by Tennessee. With the 22nd pick, the Detroit Lions select Hunter Harper, offensive tackle, Michigan State. Lions, why? I get Harper has hit in dev, but he's a 62 overall, and the offensive tackle out of Alabama, Mac Loyhauser, who's really good, is still on the board. I just, I, I don't get this pick by Detroit at all. With the 23rd pick, the New York Giants select Vuksin Marazov, edge rusher, Stanford. The Giants already have one of the more feared pass rushes in the NFL, led by Lewis Kahn, who had 15 sacks a year ago, and they're going to add... To the pressure, adding Vuksabarazov, a very talented player out of Stanford. With the 24th pick, the Buffalo Bills select Mac Loyhauser, offensive tackle, Alabama. Buffalo fans better thank Detroit because Mac Loyhauser is an absolute beast. Had the Jaguars not signed Tristan Wurst in free agency, I think the Jags would have pulled all the stops out in order to make a move to get Loyhauser, but instead he will land in Buffalo and start his career as a Bill. With the 25th pick, the Indianapolis Colts select Aaron Armstrong, safety, Houston. Very solid pick here at the back end of the first round for the Colts, adding Aaron Armstrong, a really talented safety out of Houston. It looks like the Colts want to rebuild their secondary, and this is a good start. With the 26th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Von St. Michaels, safety, Florida State. The other top safety in this class, Von St. Michaels, will not have to wait too much longer to hear his name called. Although Aaron Armstrong is slightly the better player now, St. Michaels does have hidden dev, so I think he might have more long-term upside. Nice selection here for Dallas. With the 27th pick, the Seattle Seahawks select Ogugunda Ogufara, wide receiver, Georgia. Ogufara was one of the top combine performers pushing himself into the first round. Although Jacksonville probably would have liked him with their first round pick, there are still some other good receivers left on the board. With the 28th pick, the Kansas City Chiefs select DeAndre Webster, cornerback, Michigan State. I think State. we might start to see a run on that next tier of corners, and the Chiefs are going to start that by picking DeAndre Webster, who's only 68 overall, but he's just 21 years old as well. With the 29th pick, the Cincinnati Bengals select Pasquale Avalos, cornerback, Texas a and I really like this pick for Cincinnati. Pasquale Avalos is a very versatile defensive back who I think they're going to be using in a variety of different ways. For a late first-round pick, I think this is a home run 
for Cincinnati. With the 30th pick, the Chicago Bears select D'Angelo Perryman, cornerback LSU. The Chicago Bears probably feel they're one or two pieces away from being really good. Marcus Mariota was outstanding at QB last year, and there aren't any quarterbacks worthy of being this selection. So the Bears will not go QB, rather they will go corner, adding Perriman. With the 31st pick, the Green Bay Packers select Terrence Johnson, tight end, Oregon. Although the Packers already have a really good young tight end in Jermaine Jenkins, it seems like they want to add some weapons for the new starting quarterback Jordan Love as he attempts to replace the recently retired Aaron Rodgers. So that'll bring us to the Jaguars here at 32. We did get quite a few trade offers for this pick, but nothing really enticed us and we're going to stay on the clock. There are a few players we will consider, including Washington pass rusher Tenilu Pule Fasina, who really was not supposed to fall this far, Kansas wide receiver D.D. Winterblossom, and Westlake wide receiver Tegan Moon. I would expect the pick to be one of those three guys, unless the Jaguars really go off the rails with this pick. With the 32nd pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select... D.D. Winterblossom, wide receiver, Kansas. Very interesting selection here at the final pick of the first round as D.D. Winterblossom will be a Jacksonville Jaguar. Winterblossom ends up being a 76 overall with hidden development, so a really solid value selection. Although someone like Tegan Moon would have been fun because he's very fast, he's great with the ball in his hands, the Jaguars already have receivers like that, such as DJ Chark and Casey Shock. I think Dee Dee Winterblossom brings sort of a different element to the Jaguars' receiving core. No, this is not a freak athlete, although he does have solid enough speed, but I think this kid wins with his route running ability. Good in the short game, good in the lawn passing game as well, but in the medium game, that's where he really thrives. Plays 15 to 20 yards downfield, that's where he's at his best, and that's where a lot of the Jaguars' passing is, in the intermediate game. Winter Blossom has very reliable hands, and I think he's a high floor player. He's not a great separator off the line of scrimmage, which is a concern, but I do think he's good enough to compete for the wide receiver three spot, along with guys like Zeke Bowman and Joshua Thomas. I think Winter Blossom could have the edge over both of them because of his route running and steady hands. And overall, for the last pick of the first round, I think this is a really solid move for the Jaguars, adding another playmaker to this already loaded offense. So that will complete the first round of the 2024 draft. I think we did really well. We let the board fall to us, and we got one of the guys we were targeting all along. I'm not going to go over every pick for the rest of the draft. I'm really only going to focus on any of our picks, any Westlake player going off the board, or any other notable selection that I feel like is worth talking about. So let's now advance to round two. With the 35th pick, the Carolina Panthers select Tanilu Pule Fasina, edge rusher, Washington. Tanilu Pule Fasina will not have to wait too much longer to hear his name called as he is going to Carolina. Probably should have gone in the first round, but he falls to round two, and the Panthers are killing this draft with him and, of course, Joe Lilly as well. With the 39th pick, the Los Angeles Rams select Irving Porter, running back, Westlake. The first Westlake running back to go off the board is not Isaiah Sparks. Instead, it's his running mate, Irving Porter, who's not the biggest guy, but I think he will complement Cam Akers pretty well in the Rams' backfield. So we're going to go a few picks later, up to 42. And the Jaguars have a player they've been eyeing up and would like to trade up for with the Eagles. They're offering two third-round picks, trying to get 42 and possibly a late selection. The Eagles aren't really budging. They won't even do it for a future seven next year. So the Jaguars are going to be willing to give up a little bit extra, take out the seven at a six-rounder next year, and that'll do it. So the Jaguars are going to be moving up to the 42nd overall selection with the Philadelphia Eagles. Philly will receive 72, 96, and a future 6th in return. Keep in mind, the Jaguars also have picks 64 and 69. So the Jaguars are giving up two selections, but they still own their next two picks as well. Let's see who the Jags have decided to move up for. With the 42nd pick. In the 2024 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Denver Hurd, 
linebacker Nevada. So the Jaguars were worried that Nevada linebacker Denver Hurd would fall off the board soon, and they're going to make their move to grab him. Hurd is a 73 overall with normal development, number 42 in true talent, and we picked him at 42, so pretty good value. I like this selection a lot for the Jaguars. It's no secret that their linebackers were not great last year, specifically in coverage. Last season, tight ends caught, or at least starting tight ends against the Jaguars in the regular season caught 94 passes for over 1,300 yards and five touchdowns. Long story short, the Jags need a big-bodied linebacker who can cover tight ends, and I think that's exactly what Denver Hurd can do. Hurd does need to develop a little bit, and he might play behind guys like Miles Jack, Rashawn Babineau, and David Harris this season, but Miles Jack is on the franchise tag, meaning his contract is expiring, and Rashawn Babineau will also be an expiring contract this upcoming season as well. So I don't think the Jaguars are going to bring both of those players back, maybe not even one of them, if they both struggle again. And I think Denver Hurd would make a lot of sense. He has the size and the range to be able to cover tight ends. With the 43rd pick, the Arizona Cardinals select Tristan Moon, wide receiver, Westlake. I accidentally called him Tristan, but this is Tegan Moon, the wide receiver. His twin brother, Tristan, declared for the draft after his redshirt sophomore season and plays cornerback on the Dolphins. Tegan Moon decided to stay in college a little bit longer, and he will end up starting his career in Arizona. With the 44th pick, the San Francisco 49ers select McKinley LaCroix, running back Virginia. I guess the Niners did not really feel comfortable going into the season having a starting backfield of Jimmy Garoppolo and Rashad Penny. And to be honest, I don't blame them. I think Leo Uwangale will be an upgrade at quarterback and McKinley LaCroix will be an upgrade at running back. With the 49th pick, the Miami Dolphins select Cedric Gregg, wide receiver, Washington State. Cedric Gregg has a very interesting story. He started his collegiate career at Westlake, didn't really get a ton of playing time, then transferred to Washington State where he was a stud. Put up incredible numbers. I think he's a really high floor player. And the Miami Dolphins are getting a very reliable target in Gregg. With the 57th pick, the Indianapolis Colts select Shanerda Budga, safety, Westlake. Despite Picking a safety in round one, the Colts are going to add another one with Shanair Budga, who had a really good redshirt sophomore season this year at Westlake, declared for the draft. He's a very fun and explosive player, and I am a little bit weary about having him in our division. With the 63rd pick, the Green Bay Packers select Elvin Rawls, running back Georgia. You're probably wondering why I'm talking about Elvin Rawls. Well, there's a really good running back on the board who the Packers could have taken and they decided not to. Some team is about to capitalize on Green Bay's colossal mistake. With the 64th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Isaiah Sparks, running back Westlake. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah Sparks is starting his NFL career in Duval. He is coming home to Jacksonville. Sparks is an 81 overall, the third ranked player in the draft with hidden dev. What a selection for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we know Isaiah Sparks very well on this channel. We know his upbringing. We saw his college career play out. And now we will get to see his NFL career play out as well. Sparks had an outstanding collegiate career at Westlake. In the three years he played for the Hornets, he ran for nearly 4,000 yards and 62 touchdowns. 39 of those touchdowns came this past year as a senior, the most in a single season by any player in NCAA history. Isaiah Sparks was the Heisman favorite for most of the year, but got robbed at the end by Central Florida quarterback Robert Madsen. So you're probably wondering why Sparks did not go in the first round, because he's damn sure first-round talent. Well, there are a few reasons. Number one, the lack of production in the receiving game. You need to 
be able to be a playmaker as a receiver in today's NFL if you're a running back. And Westlake just doesn't throw it to their running backs a lot. That's no fault of Isaiah Sparks, but it's unclear how good he is as a receiver. There were also character concerns in high school, if you remember. He was expelled as a senior in high school for a domestic violence issue, had to go to Juco Ball for a year before ending up at Westlake. Head coach Mason Conway has said that Sparks is not only one of the best football players he's ever coached, but also one of the best young men he's ever coached. So clearly Isaiah Sparks has gotten over those character issues. However, there were some teams still a little bit concerned about his past, and that's why he fell this far. Clearly, the Jaguars are comfortable with not only the player, but the person they are getting. So that'll do it for round two. Denver Hurd and Isaiah Sparks are now Jacksonville Jaguars. With the 65th pick, the Denver Broncos select Lou Wen, quarterback, Oregon. Are my eyes deceiving me, or did the Denver Broncos just pick a quarterback who's under 6'4"? Lou Wen is a very unique talent. He's only 5'8", but he has arm talent. He's very good with the ball in his hands. He's very quick. And Drew Locke clearly has some competition in that QB room. So the Jaguars will be on the board shortly after here at 69 overall. There are a few players who catch the Jags' attention, but they will not be holding on to this pick. Instead, they are trading down. I know everyone wants to see a pick at 69 because it's the golden number. And I apologize for anyone who is upset about this, but there's nobody who the Jags really want with this selection. So they are on the phones. A lot of teams want to trade up with this selection, but at the end of the day, it'll be the Carolina Panthers who move up to this pick. The Jaguars will receive Carolina's third rounder next year, along with the Panthers' fourth and seventh rounders this year. So really good value, in my opinion, for the Jaguars. They're getting two selections this year and an additional day two pick next year. I don't really know why Carolina is doing this. Clearly, they have a player they really like on the board. Otherwise, they would not be doing this. So the trade is accepted. The Jags have now traded up once today, and they've traded down once today as well. The player Carolina ended up selecting was 68 overall safety, Morgan Irvin. With the 73rd pick, the New York Jets select Channing Marshall, quarterback, Illinois. The Broncos could have really used a 6'6 white quarterback who has a strong arm in Channing Marshall, right? Well, the Jets are going to pick him instead. They want to give Sam Darnold some competition. And I think Channing Marshall can do exactly that. So I think this is a nice pick for them. With the 75th pick, the Arizona Cardinals select Gorokov Rodionovich. Guard, Princeton. The 6'11", 369-pound, 27-year-old guard out of Princeton, Gorokov Rodionovich, will be starting his career in Arizona. The Cardinals have killed it this draft. They got Kyar Senyo in round one, Tegan Moon in the second, and now Gorokov Rodionovich here in the third. With the 79th pick, the New England Patriots select Falamiko Faateite, center, Washington. Falaniko Faataite does not have the dev trait or rating that a guy like Gorokov Rodionovich has, but he's also five years younger, so nice pick by New England. We're going to go through the rest of the third round. The Jaguars entered this draft with three third rounders, and they end up with none. That's kind of wild. Let's advance to the fourth round now, where the Jaguars own two of the first three picks in round four. With the 97th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Aaron Sherman, guard, North Texas. To open up the fourth round, the Jacksonville Jaguars will be adding to the offensive line as they get guard Aaron Sherman out of North Texas. Sherman is a 70 overall, so pretty good value to open up the fourth round. This is a guy who I don't think will play a ton year one, but he will have an opportunity to compete for a long-term guard position. The Jaguars have Tristan Wirfs starting at one guard spot this year. The other guard position will be a competition between Damian Lewis and J.B. Givens. But with a lot of Jacksonville's offensive linemen on very short-term deals, Sherman will have an opportunity to eventually start fairly early on. Despite not being the biggest guy, Sherman is very strong. He's a very powerful lineman. The problem with him is just he's not athletic at all. 48 speed. He is the slowest player, I believe, in the entire NFL now. So he's not fast whatsoever. He's not quick at all. But he's a very tough, he's a powerful player, he's a bully, and I think he's going to be a fun player in the NFL. With the 98th pick, the Houston Texans select 
Mikel Harrison, running back, Ohio State. The former Burmester High standout, Mikel Harrison, will start his NFL career in Houston. I'm curious to see what his role will look like as a rookie and if he could be the long-term running back of the future for the Texans. With the 99th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Karim Al-Rahman, tight end, Villanova. Wow! The Jags are going for an absolute flyer in Karim Al-Rahman, the tight end out of Villanova. 68 overall with hit and dev. I know it says it's a reach, but in all factuality, it's not a bad pick. This is one of the most polarizing players in this draft class, and credit to Jacksonville for really taking a big swing here. The Jags have a lot of talent at tight end. David Njoku is going to be back as the starter this year. And there's also some good young players like Daniel Romer and Simba Azikiwe behind him. So Al Rahman will not really see the field next year, which is fine because he is not ready. Al Rahman is very new to football, and although he does have really good athleticism, other than that, he's raw. His hands need to be a little bit more polished. He's not a great blocker, although he is a willing blocker, which is good. Al Rahman comes from a basketball background, standing at 6 foot 11, 262 pounds. He mainly went to Villanova on a basketball scholarship, but walked on to the football team where he was really an intriguing player and clearly is good enough to be drafted into the NFL. Al Rahman is very raw, as I said. He's not going to play this year, and he might not even play the year after. He's just not good enough. But we've seen tight ends in the past with basketball backgrounds succeed at the NFL level, and Al Rahman could be next. With the 100th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Washington football team selects Greg Coles, quarterback, Alabama. Just like Denver and the Jets, the Washington football team is going to try to light a fire under Dwayne Haskins by picking a young and solid quarterback in Greg Coles. Very interesting to see how the Washington QB room responds. With the 103rd pick, the Los Angeles Rams select Zion Taylor II, wide receiver, Illinois. Operation Get Jared Goff Some Weapons is in full force. The Rams have already picked Siante Cunningham and Irving Porter today, but now they're going to add another really explosive and dynamic receiver in Zion Taylor II. With the 120th pick, the Buffalo Bills select Amir Logan. Offensive tackle, Westlake. Why do the Buffalo Bills draft so well? Amir Logan is a really enticing prospect. He's very raw, but he's only 20 years old, and his upside is through the roof. For a fourth-round pick, Buffalo is landing a home run right here. With the 128th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select for Carlson. Safety, Virginia Tech. It's not a very well-kept secret that the Jaguars love these hybrid, versatile defensive backs. And four Carlson out of Virginia Tech is next on that list. We've seen them pick guys like Rashawn Babineau, Ike Schwartz Raymond, and Sean Harris in recent years. Although Babineau is the only one out of that group who is a current contributor on today's team, I think four Carlson does have the potential and the hair to be really good. Carlson is a fairly big safety. He plays tough. And I think his versatility is why the Jags picked him. Not only can he go out deep and cover, but his ability to play in the box as a box linebacker, someone who can make plays in the backfield, is really interesting. And the Jaguars love these versatile players who can do a lot of different things and be used in a lot of different ways. I don't think Carlson will play a ton as a rookie, but with Rashawn Babineau's contract up after this season, for Carlson could very well be his replacement if Babineau is not brought back. Overall, I think this is a really good pick. 69 overall. Nice. And I think his athleticism and versatility will make him a very good professional here in the NFL. So a really solid pick for the Jaguars. And that'll do it for the fourth round. The Jags added three players. Aaron Sherman, Kareem Al-Rahman, and four Carlson. As we advance forward, there aren't a ton of notable picks left. So we'll be able to get through these final few rounds fairly quickly. With the 150th pick, the Detroit Lions select Michael Dubzinski, edge rusher, Westlake. Westlake has always had a ton of good pass rushers, and Michael Dubzinski never really got his chance to shine, but he does have hidden dev, and I think he could be a really nice pick for the Lions. 
with the 159th pick, the Green Bay Packers select David Anderson, edge rusher, Westlake. Similar to Dubzinski, David Anderson never really got his chance to shine because he's always been in such a loaded Westlake pass rush room. So that'll conclude the fifth round. We only went over two picks. Jacksonville did not pick anybody in the fifth round. And spoiler alert, we're just going to skip through the sixth round as well. There were no Westlake players picked in round six. We did not have any sixth round picks. And there weren't really any notable ones to talk about. I'm not just going to go over some random pick just to go over it. So we're going to go right to the seventh round where the Jaguars own two picks. I believe they own like the third pick of the seventh round. And of course, the final pick, Mr. Irrelevant, which should be fun. So let's see how the Jags use their final two picks of the day. With the 195th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Jaleel Ross, cornerback Baylor. Despite not scouting him at all, the Jaguars are going to take a shot on cornerback Jaleel Ross out of Baylor. Ross is a 66 overall with normal dev, but I do like his skill set. Although he absolutely sucks in zone coverage, this is a lean and tall corner. He stands at six foot. He has a pretty good wingspan. He's a willing tackler, pretty athletic, solid in man coverage. But what I really like him, about him is his ball skills. He had six interceptions this year, which led the Big 12 and was tied for third in college football. He has really good hands for a player who is not all that technically sound. So if he can just improve in zone coverage, there's no reason why Jaleel Ross can't be a somewhat good player at the next level. So for a 7th round pick, I really like this selection for the Jaguars. Although Ross probably will never become a star, I think he could become a quality corner with some work and development. So let's go to Mr. Irrelevant now. The Jags have a few options, including wide receiver Jason Stewart, a.k.a. Joe Lilly's father. The Heisman Trophy winner, Robert Madsen, is also still on the board as well. So we'll see how Jacksonville decides to end up using the final pick of the day. And with the Mr. Irrelevant selection, 224th overall, the defending Super Bowl champion Jacksonville Jaguars select... Rocky Rivers, fullback, Alabama. There were five fullbacks in this class. All of them are gone except for the one the Jags happen to want. And that is Rocky Rivers out of Alabama. It did not let us show his attributes on that screen. So we'll take a look at them here. Rivers is a 63 overall with normal dev. So nothing totally outstanding, but he will compete with Oliver Giroux to see who the Jags fullback this season will be. Rocky Rivers is not outstanding, but he is well-rounded. He is a versatile back. He can make a few plays occasionally with the ball in his hands. He didn't get a ton of carries or receptions at Alabama, but when he did, he wasn't terrible. He's also a pretty good blocker. I think that's going to be his main calling card. Solid athleticism, solid ability with the ball. So overall, he's just a well-rounded player, and I could definitely see him make this final roster over Oliver Giroux who was not a main contributor last season. Rivers scored 14 rushing touchdowns this season, mainly as a goal line specialist, but I do think he could be the Jaguars' fullback going forward. So that will conclude round seven. The Jags add two players with Jaleel Ross and Rocky Rivers. Interesting that the Heisman winner, Robert Madsen, who played quarterback in college, was told to move to running back, does not get drafted. Maybe if he'd stayed at quarterback, Maybe he would have ended up getting picked. Maybe he listened to the wrong people. So that'll do it here for the 2024 NFL Draft. We get to see where all of our favorite Westlake players went. You guys get to see where a lot of your custom players went, which, by the way, if you're not in the Discord and you want to make a player for next year's draft class, I would join that Discord because that's where you'll get the chance to do it. And, of course, we saw all of our picks, including wide receiver D.D. Winterblossom in the first round, trading up for Denver Hurd, picking the man who should have won the Heisman Trophy in Isaiah Sparks, and adding some talent day in day three with Aaron Sherman, Kareem Al-Rahman, Four Carlson, Jaleel Ross, and Rocky Rivers. So normally I would do a preseason stream, but I have decided not to this year because I really want to go sort of in a faster pace with this series because I want to get through two more seasons. I said in the league update video that most episodes will have two games instead of one. Next episode will only have one though. Week one against the Green Bay Packers, a Super Bowl rematch 
That is because I'm also going to briefly cover the preseason as well, with our main focus being on that week one game. So I hope you guys enjoyed the draft video. Obviously, you can tell this took a lot of work. So I would appreciate if you could like the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I hope you guys are excited for Season 5 of the Jags franchise. I'm out. Peace.